So hi everyone, uh, thanks for attending uh, our maintainer track. Uh, so I'm Yuki uh, from Cyber Agent in Japan, and uh, uh, he is my co-speaker, uh, software engineer uh, from Google in Poland. And uh, in this session, uh, we will uh, show you about a working group batch updates. Uh, so. Uh, first of all, uh, I want to uh, start by explaining uh, what our working group uh, is with in Kubernetes. Uh, in Kubernetes project, uh, we have uh, two different type uh, groups, a SIG, special interesting group, and uh, the uh, WG uh, working group. Uh, SIG has each uh, responsibility to maintain a set of uh, components for the Kubernetes project, uh, such as uh, Kube Scheduler and uh, uh, Kubelet and so on. Uh, working group uh, is a slightly different uh, in the sense. Uh, one is that uh, it doesn't own any components. Uh, and two, uh, it has a temporary group uh, so we get together basically to solve the specific problem uh, and then we decide to uh, dissolve or evolve into a SIG. Uh, in this session, uh, I'm talking about the working group batch, uh, which is a working group is a forum to discuss enhancement to better support batch, work, batch workloads. Uh, batch uh, might mean different things for different people. Uh, so let me give some examples. Uh, we deal with HPC AI ML data analytics and CI/CD uh, applications. Uh, things in general job that things in general job uh, that works to completion. Uh, one of the primary goals of the working group is to reduce fragmentation uh, in the ecosystem. Uh, if you are already in the room, uh, you might have already seen a lot of talks about batch, uh, everybody doing different things. Uh, and uh, even years uh, before people are already doing uh, many different things, uh, we want to bring some comprehension in the batch in the Kubernetes project. And to, and, and to do this, uh, we gather a set of uh, stakeholders from the community. Uh, the first one is uh, SIG scheduling, uh, because uh, this SIG is owner of KQ, uh, and we need to consider post scheduling of the batch workers, uh, like uh, gang scheduling. Uh, the second one is uh, SIG apps, uh, because uh, this SIG is owner of owner for the Java API uh, and the current Java APIs. Uh, the third one is uh, SIG node, uh, because uh, we still need our resource, our resource to run on nodes, and uh, we have accelerators and uh, we are not. Uh, the last one is uh, SIG auto scaling, uh, because uh, we need it, we need them uh, and how to scale to obviously uh, scale up your clusters when you need more resources. Uh, but uh, we are not just uh, limited to the Kubernetes developers uh, or uh, containers. Uh, we welcome a huge di diversity of ecos ecosystem developers like uh, Kubeflow and Armada and so on. Uh, so we welcome all the communities to come and bring their ideas. And uh, feature request uh, code. So what's the uh, scope? Uh, we are uh, go through uh, all these topics in this session. Uh, first is job. Uh, let me switch to Mihal. Okay, thank you. Uh, so. Um as mentioned, like one of the uh, main goals of the batch working group is to reduce fragmentation in the ecosystem. And to achieve that in the long term, we believe that uh, the right approach is to uh, increase the, um, uh, or enhance uh, the uh, built-in primitive for uh, built-in API into Kubernetes that is job. 
So this is what uh, we've been doing for the release, re, uh, last couple of releases of Kubernetes. Uh, so here you can see a list of gaps that we identified uh, and that were raised by inside the community uh, that are required for a better adoption of job and corresponding features that address these uh, gaps. In this talk, uh, we are going to focus on the uh, recent uh, features that are currently in beta or alpha. Uh, so the first one is pod failure policy. So with this feature, the aim is to improve handling of uh, pod failures in order to, at the end of the day, uh, reduce costs of running jobs. So as you can imagine, uh, if you are running a large job, uh, failures can happen and they can happen for different reasons. Let's say bugs or uh, disruptions such as preemptions. And there is a built-in mechanism like called back of limit that allows you to specify the maximal number of rest, restarts uh, of a pod. But it's very inf inflexible. So for example, if you set it too low, you are risking that your job fails and your computations are gone uh, in case of disruption by a higher priority workload. Uh, but on the other hand, if you set the back of limit too high, then you are risking that you will have uh, too many uh, retries uh, in case of software bug and then much more higher costs of running. Uh, so what are the strategies to distinguish between uh, software bugs uh, and uh, disruptions and other transient issues? Uh, so one strategy is to use container exit codes. That's what we support in pod failure policy. And this, is, this approach is also supported by other frameworks such as Kubeflow. But the one limitation of this is that some exit codes like 137 are ambiguous. Uh, so in order to discriminate further, uh, we introduce uh, pod conditions. Uh, that can indicate you the reason of the failure. So in this uh, diagram, you can see that a pod can be disrupted by uh, various uh, components inside core Kubernetes. So what we did as part of this work, we collaborated with different SIGs and uh, we reviewed code of different components of Kubernetes uh, to add the disruption target condition uh, to these components when we delete a pod to indicate what is the reason for the failure so that then pod failure policy can, um, or the user by configuration can, um, uh, can react to it. So here you can see an example YAML that uh, presents the example pod failure policy. So this is essentially just a list of rules that specify um, how you, uh, which pod you want to react based on the present uh, pod conditions or exit codes. And we support also uh, custom uh, conditions that you may want to add by uh, user supplies, uh, supplied controllers. So this is basically uh, the design and the feature is beta since 126, but uh, we identified in 126 one problem uh, that um, um, in order to match uh, against pod failure policy, we want to make sure that the pod is in terminal phase because if it still gets updates, we wouldn't, the match wouldn't be reliable because maybe in the next uh, iteration job controller would make different decision. So in order to overcome this, we want to make sure that the pod is in eventually in terminal phase, but this was not the case. Um, for example, for pending and terminating pods, uh, so we collaborated with Signode, and in 1.27 we solved this problem uh, by assigning always terminal phase based on the exit uh, codes of the uh, stopped containers, if the containers are no longer restarted. Um, however, this was a little bit of a breaking change because for some of the um, some of the pods, the terminal phase uh, changed from failed to succeeded if the containers, all of the containers exited with zero. Uh, and this required uh, changes or adaptations of daemon set and stateful sets, which we uh, proceeded with. And at this moment, we don't have any known issues to pod failure policy, so we would like to graduate it to GA in the next release. 
Uh, the next feature is back of limit per index. Uh, so this is basically to give you control over the number of retries, not globally, like back of limit, but per index for index jobs. So this can be useful to, for example, ensure that all of your um, indexes would run, because without it, you can imagine that, for example, index zero would uh, consume all your budget for retries. And so this can be useful for situations like if you have fully independent indexes. Uh, the next feature is job replacement policy. So with this feature, what we do is basically we introduce the new spec field, pod replacement policy that you can set to fail, that delays uh, recreation of a pod until the pod that is failing uh, reaches the terminal phase of failed. And why this is important, because uh, if you use jobs for uh, AI training jobs with frameworks such as TensorFlow or JAX, this uh, uh, frameworks require that there is at most one rank run running at the same time. And if, and if you have a deleted pod that is terminating, and as by default in the job, you already create the new pod, then you may have for a short while, like 30 seconds, two pods running at the same time. Uh, making the frameworks crash. And also for, this is important for resource management systems, because if you recreate the pod because before the previous one is fully terminated, you may exceed quota, uh, like use too many resources for, it for the time being. Uh, the next feature is the managed by mechanism uh, that is uh, still in alpha. And what we want to do here is to uh, give control over the job object to external uh, controllers. And this is needed for multi-queue. I will go into more details later. Uh, but because we are opening uh, job API to external controllers, we need to make sure that uh, the changes that the external controllers do to the job status are like sensible, expected by cl API clients. So we significantly strengthen validation of the uh, job status. Uh, let me explain uh, job success policy, uh, but uh, this is still uh, alpha stage feature. Uh, this feature uh, to specify uh, when a job can be declared as succeeded uh, based on the set of succeeded parts. Uh, and uh, if job met success policy, uh, job get new interim condition, success criteria met. After that, uh, the remaining parts are terminated. Uh, finally, uh, job is added to completed condition. Uh, the primary use case is uh, machine learning workloads. Uh, the machine learning workloads often, uh, often care only read our role parts, so we introduce this feature. Uh, based on the left example, uh, we can set uh, two types of criteria. Uh, the first one is uh, succeeded indexes. Uh, the second one is a success succeeded count. Uh, when you specify the only succeeded indexes, uh, once all indexes succeeded, the job is marked as a succeeded. Uh, the, the succeeded indexes is represented as a intervals separated by a hyphen. The number uh, listed in represented by the first and the last element uh, of the series, separated by a hyphen. Uh, when you specify the only succeeded count, uh, once the number of succeeded indexes uh, reach the succeeded count, uh, the job is marked as succeeded. Uh, the last one is uh, when you specify both uh, succeeded indexes and succeeded count. Uh, when the number of succeeded indexes uh, specified in the succeeded indexes uh, reach the succeeded count, uh, the job is marked as uh, succeeded. Also, uh, uh, this is a still alpha feature, so uh, let us know if you, if you have some feedbacks. Okay, so the next uh, topic is uh, job set, which is an investment done by the batch working group. Uh, so with this project, what we aim uh, 
is to improve uh, the support for AI ML uh, workloads by overcoming, uh, like building upon the primitives that Kubernetes gives you, like the job API, but overcoming the main limitation of the uh, job API, being that you can only specify one pod template. And for machine uh, training, machine learning training jobs, what you uh, very often need to do, like the common pattern is that you have uh, the coordinator pod and a set of worker pods. And you want maybe mm, different images or, and different hardware uh, for the uh, coordinator because the coordinator doesn't require GPUs, for example, so you can save a little bit uh, on the number of GPUs needed. So job set basically lets you specify the number of jobs and compose them as, as uh, um, smaller from the smaller pieces of jobs. Um, and one more thing that uh, job set gives you is the management of the headless service. So again, for machine learning jobs, uh, use, uh, it's very common that you need to ensure that there are communication channels between pods. And this can be, uh, in order to facilitate that, one common technique is to put a um, headless service in front of the group of the pods that need to communicate so that they have stable DNS names so that they can find uh, each other easily. Uh, however, if you are using, for example, job, then you are on your own with the headless uh, service um, management and job set gives you this uh, uh, for free. So it has a, a number of knobs. Uh, for example, the network options that let you configure uh, how you want to use the headless service. And there is success policy that uh, aims to mark the job as complete as soon as the, for example, workers are done. Uh, you have the failure policy, though this lets you control that uh, maximal number of restarts of the job set. Uh, or you can have startup policy that lets you control the order of uh, starting uh, different jobs in the job set. Um, because again, maybe uh, for machine learning jobs, you would like to first start the coordinator and only then uh, the workers. Uh, one important uh, feature in uh, job set is that, uh, again, for machine learning jobs, is uh, exclusive placement. So with this feature, you can indicate that you want all the jobs to land on the uh, collocated nodes. And this is like closely connected, like maybe in the same uh, GKE node pool, let's say, uh, so that you can have good bandwidth uh, for the network for communicating and exchanging gradients and whatnot during the training. Uh, and in order to achieve this, jobs that used uh, pod affinities and anti affinities, but this turned out not to be efficient during the scheduling phase. Uh, so this was like significantly improved in terms of performance uh, by the job set team by using leader uh, follower uh, paradigm. So first we uh, job set schedules the um, coordinator pods and only then the followers uh, bind much faster using not uh, anti-affinities or affinities, but node selectors. And this was also later uh, improved performance of this scenario by uh, cube scheduler uh, changes, uh, the first bit effort. Uh, so job set is still evolving. Uh, and here is like the list of the potential enhancement the team is considering. Uh, so the first one is to add more granular uh, error handling. Uh, so this is basically bringing the same or similar mechanism as uh, pod failure policy for jobs. Maybe you want to control the failures at the job set level. So if you observe that uh, a pod completed with exit code that indicates that it's a bug, then you don't want to even bother retrying the uh, entire job set. And similarly, uh, maybe it's a, if it's a distraction, mm, disruption, you want to uh, retry it for free. Uh, the second is uh, improvement that is considered is uh, to make the API for the um, placement policy more flexible. So basically building on the um, uh, exclusive placement, but making the API more declarative with spec instead of annotation and maybe giving you more control. Uh, 
Uh, also support for uh, specialized frameworks. So there is a bunch of machine learning frameworks that require users to uh, provide some uh, environment variables that could be otherwise uh, derived from the workload specification. But now it's up to the user to set them um, manually. So this is what Jobset uh, controller could help with. And uh, in place uh, pot restart. So this, the idea here is to avoid uh, um, long, large-scale uh, scheduling in terms of restarting a job set, so that you can in place uh, restart the pods. So now you. Uh, next, uh, let me explain uh, about Q. Uh, so first of all, uh, let me explain uh, what is Q. Uh, Q is a job level scheduler uh, and not pod scheduler uh, because the cube scheduler is responsible for pod scheduling. Uh, this is responsible for determining uh, when we should start and stop job. Uh, this is relevant uh, to one of the, our advantage. Our primary advantage is uh, that uh, uh, Q can delay the creator pod. Uh, as a result, uh, we can avoid the uh, creation of pending pods. Uh, by these advantages, uh, we can, uh, we can re reduce uh, Cube API server and the Cube scheduler uh, high load. Uh, another Q feature uh, is uh, supporting all or nothing semantics. Uh, in machine learning field, uh, we often follow the reader and worker pattern. And uh, such workloads require all pods start uh, at the same time. Also, uh, for sure, uh, Q supports uh, quota management and queuing. Uh, next, uh, let me show you uh, supported integrations. Uh, currently, uh, we support the eight types uh, frameworks, and uh, the supporting is started since uh, each Q version. Also, uh, if we want to use another OSS uh, or in-house job, uh, you can support the job uh, by implementing a small controller, uh, implemented uh, queue job interfaces. Uh, in the next slide, uh, let me explain a rated supported framework, pot group feature. Uh, pot group uh, indicate a set of frame pods uh, Q supports uh, plain pods uh, managed by external controllers, uh, such as uh, uh, traditional job controllers. So uh, we don't support uh, advanced features uh, such as uh, recreation or recreation of uh, failed pods, uh, like uh, batch uh, driven job. But uh, we still recommend to use job share this or uh, batch uh, driven job. Uh, next feature is uh, cluster IQ stop policy. Uh, the primary motivation is uh, stopping to admit new jobs. Uh, when we maintain uh, dedicated nodes or uh, we stop uh, using dedicated cluster IQ, uh, we want to stop to admit new jobs. Currently, uh, we provide uh, three types policy, uh, none, uh, hold on drain, and hold. The first one is none. Uh, the cross IQ continue to admit job. Uh, this is default policy. The second one is uh, hold and drain. The cross IQ uh, stopped to admit new jobs and drain uh, already admits jobs. But the job, uh, but jobs that borrow quota from other cross IQ uh, within cohort uh, will not be drained. The last one is hold. This is similar policy is hold and drain, but job is not uh, drained from node. This policy is just stopped to admit new jobs. The next feature is a rending limit. Uh, as Mihal mentioned in the previous slide, uh, we can configure quota through the nominal quota and the borrowing limit in the cluster, cluster queue. Uh, but uh, only those quota configurations, uh, cluster IQ cannot prevent to 
random resources to other cluster queues. So we introduced the random limit uh, as another knob to configure quota. Additionally, uh, it allows us to prevent over-rending or reserve quota for latency-sensitive workloads, uh, such as machine learning inference services. Especially uh, reserving quota, uh, we are planning to provide integration with KSAP, uh, so it is possible to manage various types of workloads only by queue in a single node, single cluster. Uh, next feature is uh, visibility on demand. Uh, this feature exposes the ordered list of workloads, uh, every local queue and cluster queue. Uh, this feature gives users uh, possibility to estimate when your job is will start. Also, this feature provides a limit and offset to be able to obtain expected risk. Currently, we provide only this information as Cube API server extension point, but we are planning to support uh, dedicated CRI and web dashboard to obtain this information easily. Uh, the next feature is uh, workload priority class. This feature uh, can provide the similar uh, functionality as Kubernetes port priority class. Uh, but so we often want to define the dedicated priority uh, separate from pot priority class. Uh, if we want to use the workload priority class, uh, we can specify the priority class uh, via job label, like the left example. Uh, okay, so there is a couple of uh, more features that we are like passionate about and would like to uh, show you. Uh, so the next is, uh, maybe it's not doing all that much by itself, but it's like an important uh, building block for other uh, features. So this is basically the uh, plugin mechanism that let you uh, introduce additional conditions before admitting a job. So quota, um, a queue normally operates and admits uh, jobs based on the quota in the cluster configured. Uh, however, with this uh, feature, you can add uh, external controller uh, for example, for uh, in-house budgeting. Uh, or we also use uh, built uh, queue native features such as provisioning request integration or multi-queue using internal controllers to, uh, uh, to uh, update the admission check status. So let me uh, describe the provisioning request integration feature. So what we aim to solve with this feature is like our approach to um, all or nothing semantic. So currently, uh, uh, by integrating with cluster autoscaler at a slightly different level than currently. So currently, we uh, expect cluster autoscaler to provision new nodes, but only in reaction to existing pods. And this is problem for um, uh, for machine learning jobs, because if you request uh, this way 1,000 uh, nodes, GPU nodes, for example, you are very likely to hit uh, uh, GPU stockouts, and it's also very likely to take very long, the scale-up. So for a long time, you will have many pods that are uh, pending. So with provisioning request uh, API, and uh, this is the API, you can specify the before you create the pods, you can specify the pod sets. So a single pod set is basically gives you the number of uh, pods that you want to have and the pods template specifying, uh, among other things, uh, the uh, amount of resources needed. And so it's a list because we want to support heterogeneous jobs. And then you have provisioning class name. So this specifies you the mode uh, that you want to the provisioning request to be provisioned uh, uh, with. And then we have custom parameters. Uh, so currently we are working with cluster uh, autoscaler team to support two semantics natively, that is check capacity and generic scale up. In case of generic scale up, uh, cluster autoscaler will iteratively try to achieve the, um, um, the, the re uh, requested capacity. Uh, however, you can also add uh, custom uh, vendor-specific uh, integrations, and we already have one for uh, GKE that uh, uh, 
yeah, uh, uses the Qt provisioning feature uh, and, and specific API for that. Uh, so let's take a look how uh, we integrate uh, with Q, uh, this feature. So of course, as before, like in the general workflow in Q, the user creates the job, the job is suspended, and then the quota is reserved. And at that moment, it is up to cluster autoscaler to provision the required nodes to fulfill the request. Once the request is fulfilled, we have the new nodes. Uh, it's up to Q again to inject all the necessary um, information so that the pods can find the provisioned nodes. The next feature is uh, also building upon the idea of admission check is multi-cluster uh, job dispatching. So with this feature, we want to improve GPU obtainability. Uh, because you can have now clusters in multiple regions, and in mul different regions you can have uh, the busy hours at different times, letting you uh, probe the capacity at a given moment for GPUs, uh, and also from different cloud providers, potentially. Uh, another uh, thing that you can achieve with this feature is scaling up large computational clusters by splitting them and uh, uh, distributing the load onto uh, multiple execution clusters. And then the management cluster is offloaded because it does not at all create the pods. All the pods are created on the execution clusters. Let's take a look uh, how this works in practice. So the user only interacts with the management cluster and creates the job. Once the quota is uh, reserved for the job, we, there is admission check, multi-queue admission check. And it awaits for, uh, we, Q also then creates workloads. We call them pre-built workloads on all of the um, um, execution clusters. But at this moment, we don't yet create pods. So we wait until the first workload is admitted. And then we delete all the other workloads. Once this is, uh, and only once this is done, so we have now one-to-one -one corresponds between the selected cl execution cluster and the management cluster. So this is like a very simple conceptual model when you have just uh, uh, this one-to-one -one correspondence, and then it's up to multi-queue to use the managed by um, uh, flag to, you to synchronize the status of the job. Another feature that we are uh, currently working on is uh, fair sharing. So with fair sharing, if you have unused resources, for example, Team X doesn't work currently or, or works on another project, Team A and Team B could borrow the resources. But uh, currently in FIFO manner, so means, this means that there might be imbalances. And with fair sharing, we resolve the imbalances with preemption. And another feature related to quota management is hierarchical cohorts. So we got feedback from users uh, that um, some big organizations require very often deeper uh, uh, structures to reflect uh, and want to um, more control over configuration for quotas at different levels of the organization, at the department level or uh, team level. And with that feature, you can also now uh, prioritize borrowing at uh, close distances in the organization structure. And also, as a batch working group, for the last uh, couple of meetings, we were hosting discussions on the uh, DRA uh, to uh, move and discuss uh, path forward from alpha to beta. Uh, we will see how this uh, goes, but uh, I think the discussions were fruitful on uh, how to integrate cluster autoscaler and cube scheduler uh, with DRA. And as mentioned, we have uh, meetings. Uh, so we are, if you are interested with what we are doing with any of the projects, like the jobs at the queue or, or the job itself, then we invite you to discuss things on Slack um, at the Barge Working Group channel or attend the meetings. And with that, we are happy to take some questions.
presentation. I have some people from ATP. I have a quick question about the you uh, before few slides before you had a, uh, the feature called uh, resource reservation in the queue. Uh, can you please go back? Uh, oh, here, yeah. Okay. You mean the provisioning request? Uh, Like, uh, where you ask for more resources to add to the cluster, and then uh, somewhere you maybe this the provisioning request, right? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, how do you manage the, the resource reservation? I mean, like, when you add the resource to the cluster, then are you going to reserve it for some time till the ports come up? Or? So, this depends a little bit on the mode of provisioning request. Uh, so, uh, if we um, yeah, it entirely depends. Uh, uh, for example, in the check capacity, we actually don't provision new nodes. We just check if there is enough of capacity in the currently existing nodes. Right. Uh, so this might be a feature that is helpful for uh, uh, clusters on-prem that don't have auto-scaling. Uh, for like generic uh, scale-up, we will scale up the nodes uh, in like one-to-one -one fashion. So you have one job and just the set of dedicated nodes. And for what I know, it's the same that the uh, Qt provisioning from GKE uh, mode does. So it provisions you the new nodes in atomic fashion. Right. So you are guaranteed to get your thousand nodes all uh, nothing. Yeah. Yep. Uh, the, my question is like in the dynamic resource allocation, you have kind like a resource claims, right? So that, that, that represents that this resource claim is for this specific port. Oh, you mean like? Right, like a volume claims. Mm -hmm. Volume claim, that's yours. But uh, yeah, I, I don't understand. But in here, if you add resources, who's going to manage it? And, I mean, like, if somebody is. So yeah. this is up to the cluster autoscaler to manage okay. the resources. So it's cluster autoscaler that provisions the resources. And once the pods, uh, like the job completes and the pods are uh, gone, then it's cluster autoscaler that will scale down uh, the resources. Okay, but thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think we are done. So thank you once again. Thank you.